to another one of my videos. This is the BGM kit build and this is the BGM kit. This one RT195 kit is probably one of the most popular kits on the market at the moment. Extremely versatile. If you look at the cylinder head, it's got a huge spigot on it. This is really advantageous if you put in um, long stroke cranks because you can still centre with a, with a thick gasket on it. Once you put, say, a 60mm stroke in, you're going to end up with a one and a half or two mil gasket on the top, but there's still enough spigot for it to centre in the bore. This is the first of our uh, upgrades for this motor. Is we've changed the engine mounts to uh, Series Three BGM engine mounts. We've upgraded the crank. This is now a sip race crank, 60 mil stroke, 110 mil rod with a Molly Benham uh, rod there, which is much more durable. It's a GP crank instead of the airline crank, so all the bearings are upgraded. And we've uh, changed the mag housing to a uni, a uni mag housing as well. On this side, we've welded up the clutch to reinforce it, because this is very common, the rivets coming loose. That's a little upgrade we've done. Pull down chain tensioner, uh, 18, 47 sprockets, an uh, LI box on it. With the LI 125 gearbox and this sprocket setup, that gives us a final ratio of 4.83. And we're going to be fitting the BGM 5 plate clutch in here as well to give him a better clutch. Okay, one more thing I'm going to be doing on this RT kit, I'm going to be fitting a decompression port. That's going to go right in here. Okay, here's our dry build. We are just popping this gasket on. This is a, or rather it's a packing plate, more than, more than a gasket. This is a three mil. Three mil packer on the bottom. We've just got our piston in with no rings. Gudgeon pin is in just to set up our port timings and our uh, squish clearance. So we're just dropping it together, dry build, basically. So we've got a 1.5 mil head gasket to go on as well. All by BGM. Oh, that's the wrong position, let's try it there. Little confusing. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Stick our solder wire in. Head on. Some nuts, and we'll just check our uh, squish clearance. If I haven't talked it down, I've just hand tightened it evenly. So that should be okay. Now, oh, I think we've just lost. I think we've lost our solder down the exhaust port or something. Back off, where's our solder gone? 
just disappeared down the exhaust port. Now it's there, obviously not thick enough. Let's get a new solder wire. So a fresh bit in there. Unfortunately, I've only got one mil and would prefer to have 1.5 mil solder wire, but I just can't seem to find any around here. So it's one mil twisted to give us the, the thickness. So back inside with me solder wire. Look at that. Back together again. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't go right first time, does it? Hmm, looks like this is going to have to wait a little while. Um, so far we've got all this done, but I'm sure it's worth everybody waiting for. Got to do some machining on this side for the jet block. That's going to take a little while. Anyway, back to the engine. easily and I didn't have to put too much force so let's have a look what our squish clearance is with this uh, setup 1.2 would be rather nice but we'll see 1.3 it will still pass Look, zero this baby, check on this part, 1.17, that's okay, this bit, 1.19, and here, that says 1.3, no it doesn't, 1.13, Okay, we'll swing this out of the way. Easily done. So, the next thing we're going to check before we start putting this together will be our ring gap. Pack it. Ring gap, we're just going to slot it in the top of the barrel. Push it down with the piston. So I better take the piston back off here a second. Push it down with the piston. So it's nice and even. And then just check it. Okay, we're measure, we're messing around with our feeler gauges, and we've got a feeler gauge that just nicely slides between there. We'll just check the one above it. See if that still goes in. No. So we're going for this one and our ring gap is 0 0.23. So that's within tolerance. Okay, we're ready and armed for a top end build. So we've got our gasket sealant, we've got our piston with some rings on and one circlip already fitted in it. The other circlip waiting here. Small end bearing, which we'll put in first. We'll give it a little dose of uh, Two stroke oil. Okay, that's that in. Piston, get two stroke on our gudgeon pin. Now we'll put our piston on, arrow facing down as normal. Whizzing round. Right, that's that in, circlip. Mm. 
make sure that's fully in and correct. Always double check all the way around. Push the circlip to pin back the other way. See if it's going to. Okay. Good, 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 good. Solid. I'm always very, very, very attentive to these. You've got to make sure they're in there one, 100%, if not even 200%. Okay, that's that on. We'll uh, apply some two stripe oil to the inside of the bore. With my finger, not too much, only needs a fine coat. It's not gushing out all over the place like it's bleeding to death. washers here now note that you uh, you need to change the studs on there when you're fitting this kit it comes with studs supplied which are longer so you'll need to replace them otherwise your studs will be too short so on with our washers one's dropped off okay a quick little nip Now we've got four more uh, bolts to go in with a washer on. Now, when you fit these ones, put some grease on the threads because I've noted that if you put them in dry, they will tend to strip the aluminium when you pull them back out. They don't like it very much. So always put some uh, grease on these. I don't know what it is, it's something about uh, this RT cylinder kit, but they seem to want to strip the uh, the alley thread when you pull these back out again. So fit them with some grease and that stops that problem from happening. Okay, so they're all in there now. So it's now time for the torque wrench. Okay, 
torquing down the cylinder head. What we're going to do is we're going to go around the four original bolts first in the normal cross pattern up to 20 newton meters. We don't go straight up there first. We go up gently in stages. already hit 20 so is that one so is that one now and so is that one so now we'll go for 20 on the other four That one done, that one done, that one done, and that one done. So now we'll go up to 24 newton meters, which is slightly higher than what we have it now. It's a little twist, 24. And we go around again, but this time, we go around in our final pattern, which, will, which I've got written down. Wait a minute. Okay, this is the pattern we're going to use. One, two, three, four. Then back over here, five, six, seven, eight. Finishing where we started. So, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and back here, eight. That one doesn't want to talk up. We go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Still wasn't want to go for some reason. Seven, eight. Now it's gone. Ha! Oh, thought that was never going to talk up, but it has. So they're all talked up nice and evenly now. Uh, that's the cylinder head torqued down. We'll put the inlet manifold on and exhaust, and we'll do a pressure test on it. That'll be the next thing. exhaust manifold on I forgot to do the leak down test so we've got to take it back off again <laughs> so stupid <laughs> so off it comes we'll do the leak down test to 
be cold. Ugh, get in there. Mm. Oh, it's still tight. Got it. So whiz it round so we can see the gauge. Yeah. It's either got a super massive leak somewhere, something not quite right. Of that we're leaking somewhere badly. Just tighten this hole a bit more. Won't be that because it's got the rubber on it. Oh, okay, something. It's gone straight down. Okay, on with the spray. Big leak. Have a look around here then, eh? My gauge in. That's in. Right. Found me air leak. And it's quite big, and it looks, it's on this stud on the, uh, on the mag housing for some reason. Well, I'm hoping it's just the mag housing gasket there. So that's got to come off and be resealed. Better. Wow, that's quite a big leak there. Right, let's take it apart. Well, I'm kind of praying we don't have any uh, cracks in our block or anything crazy like that. Uh, but we'll, we'll soon find out when we take this mag off. We should be able to see something. Damn. Now I don't want to destroy the gasket if I can help it, so I'm just going to try and tap this off with my rubber mallet. Because it hasn't been on there that long. Yeah, there we go. Washers, catch me washers. Oh, the gasket's broken and it's right there. Well, gasket broke, why? Has it tightened it up? Unless that's just broke as I've taken it off. Dear. I hope that's from the gasket face and not from the casing or something. Okay, mag housing's off, new gasket, more sealant. Uh, let's give it another go and see what's going to happen now. Pray it's not my casings. Oh, that leap took quick. Aha! Yes! Oh. That's a big difference. Big difference. Let's spray some spray around it. Anyway, just to double check. Nothing coming out of the casings. Yes. Oh, yes.
get a bit more pressure in it. That'll do nicely. Yep, that's a success. Why that was leaking? Maybe the gasket broke as I fit the as I fitted the magos in, or something. Uh, yep, broken gasket for some unknown reason. Okay, I think that shows the importance of a leak down test. And maybe yeah, in the future episodes, we'll be seeing more on my uh, fuel injector. So stay tuned for that. And in the next episode coming up, we're going to have our decompression port and some pictures from Paolo, who did one on his, from watching my channel, and he did a great job. Well done, Paolo. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all later. Bye.